Hello, I'm Dan from Ace RV Rentals and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at this 2020 Winnebago Mini Winnie 31H. Now, I'm going to be showing you the outside, the inside, everything in between, so you'll be all prepared and set when you come to rent from us. Over here on the driver's side, we've got stickers that show the dimensions of this RV. So, the most important one here is the height. That means you should be mindful of places like parking garages, drive throughs Most tunnels should be okay unless you're going to like New York City, but um, if you want uh, wider areas when you're going to the gas station, truck stations uh, can do that for you. On to the compartments here. The first one is just going to be a storage area. Next up we have the compartment for the generator. So the generator is going to be a substitute for when you're not plugged in to 30 amp connection at a campsite or wherever else you're plugged in. It's going to run on the engine gas, so as long as you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. It's going to power all the major electrical appliances in your RV, that'll be your TVs, your microwave, your AC unit, and your outlets. Uh, you really won't have to come out here and do anything unless you accidentally run the AC and the microwave at the same time. That'll be too powerful for this generator and it will cause it to trip. In the case that you do that, you just want to come out here, take the top off, and then the breaker is going to be right here. It'll flip back if you run both at the same time, so all you want to do is just flip it towards you like that. Next up here, we have the storage compartment for the power cord. So the power cord, when you're plugged into 30 amp connection, you won't have to worry about the generator at all. When you're plugged in, all the major electrical appliances will work the same that the generator would run. And you can run the AC and the microwave at the same time. The thing is, with the mini Winnie's, the end of the power cord will have to be plugged in regardless. So either it's going to be plugged into the RV when you're using the generator or when you're on the road. And when you're at your campsite, you're going to unplug it here and plug it into the post of your campsite. So no matter what, it has to be plugged in somewhere. Back here we have the exhaust for the hot water, which we'll talk more about inside. And below that we have the furnace exhaust, so expect both of these to be hot and just don't put your hand here. And below that we have the propane tank. So the propane tank for this one is going to be about 14 gallons. Um, it'll last about one week before you'll have to refill it. It's going to power things like your stove, your oven, your water heater, and your fridge when you're not plugged in. There's going to be a sensor inside that will show you how full or empty this tank is, and when you do have to refill it, truck stations and campsites will do it for you. Now in the back here we have the dumping station, which is where you'll dump out your black and gray waste tanks. What you want to do is just take the sewer hose that we give you, take this end with the teeth and clip it on right here, and then take this other end with the elbow and stick this into the ground at your campsite or wherever else you're dumping. Then from there you have two valves here which are color coded. You have the gray valve, which is for your gray tank that's your sinks and your shower. And the black valve here is for the black tank that's going to be your toilet. When it's pulled out like this, that means it's open, and if there were anything in the tanks right now, they'd be coming out due to gravity. You open up the black one first, and then the gray one to kind of flush it out when you're done. There are sensors inside that will show you how full or empty these tanks are as well. So when they're empty, all you want to do is just push them in to close them. Then you can just unclip the hose. Put the cap back on and you're done. Over here we have a bunch of inlets, but first of all we have the gas inlet. It's just going to take regular gas, so no premium or diesel. Over here you have the cable inlet. So we'll give you this, this is for the TV. So when you're at your campsite, you're going to plug it in here and get all the channels through cable. If you don't, there's also an antenna in this RV, so you can find all the local channels through the air as well. Over here we have the city water inlet and the fresh water inlet. We're going to use the same hose for both of these. The fresh water is going to be when you're filling up your tank itself. So the tank in this RV, you're going to fill it up with the fresh water inlet. Um, there's going to be a sensor inside like all the other tanks that will show you how full it is. So when you're on the road, when it's the sink or the shower or the toilet, you're just going to take it off of the tank. That's opposed to the city water here, which is what you're going to plug into when you're at your campsite and you want to take their water instead of your own. That water will bypass the tank and go straight into the pipes. So when you're plugged at the campsite, you will not be taking your own water if you're plugged into city water. And the tank flush valve, you won't have to worry about. This is just for us when you return. And finally, at the back of the driver's side, we have the storage area that will give you all the hoses that you'd like. You've got the sewer hose right here that I just showed you. This white hose here, you're going to use for those fresh water and city water inlets that I showed you. And in this box here, you have the TV cable and a 30 to 15 uh, amp adapter. Coming over to the back of the RV here, 
you can see the rear view camera which will go back about eight feet um, you can leave it on when you're driving as a safety precaution otherwise when you put the rv in reverse it'll pop up on the display and over here you have the surface ladder that goes up to the roof and there's really nothing to do up on the roof so please don't go up there now the passenger side for this is pretty much exclusively storage compartments You've got these really long ones for like beach chairs and umbrellas Got another similar one over here. We have a third storage compartment here, a bit smaller. And we have one final one right up at the front of the passenger side here. Over here is the back of the refrigerator. Expect it to leak water. It's just condensation, so it's not broken or anything. Down here you have a second TV cable inlet and you just have standard 110 volt, 15 amp power outlets right here. Just make sure the generator is running or you're plugged in for these to work. Now that we're done with the outside of the RV, we're gonna head inside here. So first you'll note that we have a screen door here that attaches from the cabin door and this panel will slide up like this. Entering the RV here, to my left we have the fire extinguisher. To my right here we just have the switches for the lights, the porch light will be outside and the guy lights will be the ceiling lights on the inside right here. Below that we have the fuse box, we'll give you extra fuses on the front cab and I'll show you that when we get there. And over here we have the awning, just to turn on and off the awning. Uh, you can pull out the awning with this button, just make sure the keys are out of the ignition and the parking brake is on. The awning will go out about 8 feet total, and it's really only for shade, so if it gets windy or rainy, you should pull it in. The awning light will be the LED lights on the awning. The coach battery, or the house battery, can be switched on and off here. It's actually going to be underneath these steps right here. It's going to be for very minor electrical things, like the lights, or the awning, or the slide-outs, because that means that you don't have to be uh, plugged in, you don't have to have the generator running just to turn on a light, for example. The house battery is going to be running when you're plugging in um, the RV at your campsite or when the engine's running. The house battery will be charged, so you can rely on it the whole time. Now over here is the most important part of the inside of the RV. We have the control panel right here that will tell you everything you need to know. So down here we have the levels of all the tanks, as I was talking about outside. If you hold down each of these buttons, these lights will pop up from empty to one thirds, two thirds, and full. If you hold down LPG, that's your propane, you'll see that's two thirds full battery if you hold that down you can expect this to be charged you have the fresh water hold this down you can see it's full and then here are your waste tanks the black tank you can see that's empty and if you hold down the gray as your gray tank that's empty as well above that we have the switches for the water pump and the water heater if you turn on the water pump this light will turn on and you can get water from any of the faucets we recommend you have this off when you're driving just in case a faucet opens you don't want everything leaking out over here is the water heater, this is going to run on the propane, so once you turn this on, you, this light will turn on and you can hear the water heater turn on outside. It will take no more than 20 minutes to heat your water with the propane, so if you want to take a hot shower, just plan that much in advance. Above that here we have the generator, so if you hold down stop, that will prime the generator, this is when you want to turn it on. Just hold down stop first until these lights pop up. This will be the total number of hours the dinner has been running, so you can keep track of how long it has been running here. Here's about 487 hours. Um, we recommend you have the generator on for no more than three hours at a time and then turn it off for three hours just to let it cool down. So just go from three hours on, three hours off. That's if you want to keep it running. Now I'll just hold down start. I'll just give it a few seconds. There you go. When the microwave beeps, you know that everything will be running. It just did, but it can take up to two minutes to do that. Next, I'll show you how to find channels on the TV. So once the TV is on, you're gonna press source right here. Make sure the source is on TV. Next, we're gonna hit menu, go over to channel, and then you can switch between air, which is the antenna, what we're using right now, or you can use cable if you're plugged in with cable at your campsite. I'll switch back to air here. I'll go over to auto channel search, execute, and it'll take like five to 10 minutes to find channels. Below the control panel is your thermostat. So you just wanna press this rectangle and it'll cycle through the different options. So right now we're on off, Cool high is the best setting for the AC. Just give it a few seconds, it'll turn on right above my head. There you go. And if you want to turn it off, you're just going to keep cycling through until you get to off. Give it a few more seconds and it'll turn off. Above the control panel here, we have the switches for the slide outs for the driver's side and passenger side. 
Just make sure the engine has to be running for this one, parking brake has to be on. The tank here you won't have to worry about unless it's winter time. You just want to keep this flipped on and it will prevent the waste tanks from freezing over. And the inverter you won't have to worry about at all. Opposite the bathroom we have the bunk bed area right here. And in the back here we have the master bedroom. You have tons of cabinet space over here. You can hang the clothes in this cabinet over here. Drawers on the bottom here and you have your own TV as well. Over here is your bathroom area. So starting off with the toilet here, you just want to push down on the pedal right here. Just make sure the water pump is on for everything to work. The toilet paper is RV specific, so you have to go to like the camping section at Walmart or campsites themselves will sell it. You have some more cabinet space up here. In the sink, I just placed a few solutions for the toilet. So if you just pour this down, if the smell comes up, it'll freshen it up for you. But apart from that, it's just a standard sink and a standard shower. Onto the kitchen area. Over here we have the fridge. As I said, outside is going to be running on the propane when you're not plugged in. And when you do plug into 30 amp connection, it is going to automatically switch over to electricity. So no matter what, the fridge is going to be staying on. Just holding down the power button will turn it on. If you press mode here, you can see five snowflakes. That'll be the coldest setting. You just press this thermometer to cycle through. But for the mode, A means automatic, which means it will automatically switch over. We're not plugged in, so the teardrop is showing up. That means it's running on propane. But you can manually select it to electricity if you'd want. But I'm just going to set it back to automatic. Over here is the sink. We like to keep the turntable for the microwave in here, just in case the latch breaks. You don't want the plate coming out and shattering on the ground. Over here is the microwave, just a standard house microwave. Just make sure when you're running on the generator, AC and the microwave not at the same time. Over here is your stove, it's going to run on the propane. So all you want to do is just set it to light, hit the burner, and there you go. The stove is going to use this knob here, so just set it to the pilot, all the settings will be on the knob, and this is the oven. When you're done with the stove, just wait a few minutes before you put the top back on, otherwise you might trap the propane in there. Over here is your living area. We'll start off with the sofa here. You have seatbelts enough for three people, and this turns into a bed. All you want to do is just take this latch right here, pull it, and it'll come out like this. Opposite the sofa, we have the dinette area. There are also seatbelts for three people, and this also turns into a bed. So if you come down here, you'll see this black knob. All you want to do is turn this counterclockwise to loosen the tabletop, and then you can just take it off like this. The same goes for the pole right here. Lifting all these bottom cushions up, you can then lay the tabletop right in the middle here. And putting all the cushions back, this is your bed. As for the overhead bunk, you just want to take this cushion, just pull it down here, and then you can just take the ladder and hook it up to the latches right here. To use the windows, all you have to do is just flip this latch out, pull it open, the screen door also comes out, push it to close, lock it like that, and for blinds, just pull down and pull it again for it to come back up. In the front cab here, we've placed the extra fuses I was talking about. We have an extraction manual right here and the registration. For the keys, we have the ignition right here. This oval one is going to be for the cabin door, and the diamond one here is going to be for the outside compartments. This keychain right here will have the 24-7 roadside assistance number, so you can call this for any questions you have. Over here on the display, we have the radio. You can also connect your phone with Bluetooth. This one down here, we have the rear view camera. Keep this on when you're driving. And if you put your indicator on, this will be the right indicator. You have the camera that goes to the right and to the left. By my left foot here, we have the parking brake, so you just want to push it down with your foot and release it like this. And that's all I've got for our 2020 Winnebago Mini Winnie 31H model. I've been Dan from Ace Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.